comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. You know, you've got these little moments in your life that haunt you. Even though they might seem innocuous, like it's not such a big deal, they stay with you and they haunt you forever. Like they're not even necessarily big things most of the time. They're just little incidents that reveal to no one else but yourself what a disgusting person you are. <laughs> How fucking gross you are. I'll tell you the one that's haunted me every day since it happened. Happened about three years ago. It's not a big incident either. And I don't know why it has stuck with me for so long now. And with such intensity, whenever I think about it, I shiver. And I think about it at least once or twice a day. So hopefully talking, <laughs> hopefully talking about it can exercise it from my fucking mind. And I have a few of these, but this one just has its fucking claws in me. So I was in New York in 2019, it must have been, the start of 2019. It was one of my last hurrahs before I gave up drinking. So I bought tickets to go see a show at the world famous fucking Comedy Cellar. And I went there and watched a show every night I was in New York. And to get fucking hammered there. Fuck, I got drunk there. Some of the nights I was staying there and watching like two or three shows and I cannot remember any of the second or the third shows. But anyway, I had tickets to a show and the show was starting in like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. So I'm like, why don't I go find a bar and get hammered before I go into the comedy club and get even more hammered. And I was already pretty hammered to begin with. So I walk a few doors down. It was like seven or eight doors down from the comedy cellar on the right hand side there. And it was some like Italian restaurant maybe slash bar type thing. So I go up to the bar, I sit at the bar, I'm drinking my beers with gin. And I'm like, this is it. This is pretty good. There was a few people in there, but there was this guy sitting at the bar with me. And he was in a conversation with the bartender. And I'm listening to the guy drinking at the bar and he has that thick fucking New York accent. And I'm drinking my gins and my beers and I'm like, this is fucking cool. This is a bit of me. I'm in fucking New York. There's some fucking guy talking like a New Yorker. This is the shit. This is the real shit. We're the real New York, me and this guy. Fuck all these out of towners. It's just me and this guy. So he's sitting there and I'm sitting there and it's gone a little bit quiet. And I'm like, I'm going to strike up a conversation with my fucking New York brother here. And it had been silent for a little while at this point. So there was no real good jumping off point. But I was drunk and I was like, I'm just going to build rapport with this guy. So I dig deep into my bag of openers to get a conversation started. And I say this to him. I go, it's nice to actually hear a New York accent in New York. But the way I said it, ugh, the way I said it was like, it's good to hear another New York accent in New York. Like me and him. Like New York brethren. Like we've been in the city forever. Fuck all these foreigners and out of towners. It's just me and you. The old New York. So when I said that to him, how I expected the conversation to go from there was he would say something like, yeah, we're a dying breed, aren't we? And we'd get into this big conversation about old New York and the gentrification of New York and all this sort of shit. Like I know anything about it. I know nothing about it. I'm just going off shit I've heard New York comedians talk about on podcasts. That's what I'm going off. And so this dude turns to me and also... When I said it, it didn't come out well either. I was already a little bit drunk, so it came out a little slurry and it's stuttery. So anyway, this dude turns to me and he sort of gives me a dirty look. (laughs) Fucking hell. And he goes, are you fucking busting my balls because I'm from Jersey? And I'm like, what? (laughs) Jersey? (laughs) What are you talking about? That's a New York accent. And then I go completely fucking red, like, oh my God, this is so fucking embarrassing. And I just want to die. I would have been happy just dying then. So I'm sort of like half stuttering, thinking about what I should say next, because I didn't want to say, oh, I thought your accent was New York. I thought we were going to bond over like being from New York. I I don't exactly know what we were going to do. So I'm sort of like half stuttering, completely fucking red, like beetroot. I just fucking bombed a set in front of friends and family. Like, I just wanted to disappear forever. And then he yells out to the bartender. He's like, hey, Mike, this guy over here, he's busting my balls about the Jersey accent. 
and like fucking barkeep Mike is polishing glasses with a tea towel, shoots him a fucking bartender's grin. And then this fucking New Jersey cunt who was pretty sourced up himself is like, that was a good one, kid. That was a good one. That was a good one. And I'm like, yeah, gotcha. (laughs) Yeah, gotcha. But in my soul, in my soul, I knew what a fucking fraud I was. Like, that is what it was. That's why it is so haunting for me. Because I was outed as a complete and utter fraud. Not to them. I got away with it to them. To myself. (laughs) I could no longer deny that I was a disgusting fraud. And then he asked me where I'm from, and I say Australia. And then we get into this conversation about New Jersey that I really don't give a fuck about. And the whole time we're talking, I'm having like some sort of existential crisis or something like that. Like in my head, my brain was going, you're a fraud, you know that. You know you're a fraud. You thought you were going to have some big conversation about fucking New York, didn't you? You don't know anything about anything. Why do you even talk to anyone? I don't know why something so innocuous hit me so hard. (laughs) It was fucking brutal. And I think about it all the time. I'm thinking about it now and it still gives me douche chills. It haunts me. That's the reality. You cannot hide from yourself. You can fool everyone else, but you can never fool yourself for long. You can fool yourself for a little while, but not long. You eventually get shown as a fraud. Yuck. Anyway, that is it for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around. Sign up to the Patreon. The links are in my social media bios or just send me a message and I'll send you the link personally. Anyway, see ya the fuck later.